Well, hello, friend. I'm out here at the park, right? As I am a lot. <laughs> I wanted to let you know that um, I was going to bring out my Bible this morning and give you some words, but I forgot it. I was going to do it yesterday because the Holy Spirit had me look at some things specifically about what Jesus said. Because I'm always on here telling you that I, I do condemn the church for its hypocrisy, but what I'm really here to do is tell you that Jesus said the kingdom was here, and those that seek it will find it. Jesus said if you want the bread of life, not to knock lightly, that if you, if you wanted the bread of life, you're going to have to knock as if your neighbor is in bed, and you want him to get up and give you some bread, right? So if you go knock and you knock all lightly, the, the father's going to yell down, go away! The hour's late, I'm in bed with my children, right? But, he said, if you want the bread of life, you have to knock out a sheer audacity. So you should be like, Father, give me my bread, right? Well, I'll tell you how you do that. You do that by reading what Jesus said and doing the things he asked. He said, those that hear my sayings and put them into practice will build their house on a rock. That truth is not a lie, friend. The church is not saying that they're liars, nothing personal. But they're doing everything but telling you that the kingdom is here because that's where Jesus said you could have it. Did it ever make you wonder where Jesus said that if you call your neighbor a fool, you're in, you should fear hellfire, right? That you're in danger of hellfire? Well, that was actually Gehenna's fire, which is the wrath of your neighbor, right? A state or place of mental suffering. So the Bible's been, you know, they, they translated a lot of things that weren't quite the way it was. And it's not that it's that big of a deal, and it's not that my father's upset that it was done, because you need to maintain the law in order for people to rise in the spirit of love, because the spirit of the love is the spirit of the law. So if you don't have the law, you can't rise in the spirit of love. So that is the purpose of the law. And as you can see, it's falling in this nation because selfishness reigns and therefore the spirit of love is fading so that also means my father's crop is going to fade with it right the one that christ was here to create so those of you that don't want to rise in the spirit of love are dead seed so the church is full of dead seed i'm just not lying to you about that and anybody that looks will know exactly what i'm talking about but if you don't know jesus you don't know what i'm talking about because you listen to them tell you about what paul said and paul was not getting what Jesus was saying because he wasn't supposed to at the time, yet he already had the kingdom, and he was telling you how to get it just like Jesus did, but they keep telling you that you're going to get your kingdom in your death, and that's a lie. If you don't want it in your life, why do you want it in your death? But if you get in a relationship with my father, his thoughts are higher than ours. It's not that you're going to be perfect, because I'm not perfect by any means. That's not the point. The point is I'm in a relationship with my father. But for this morning, like... Some of the things that people say are true, and Christians will completely deny it, and that's because they've lied to themselves. So, like, this morning, I had this headache, right? And I was having experiencing pain, and the more I focused on it, the more it hurt. And uh, I was started talking to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit told me, that's not pain, Jason, it's just telling you that something's not right in your body, so stop calling it pain. It's just a little pressure, isn't it? And I'm like, yes, Lord. And he's like, so stop calling it that and stop thinking about that. And you start thinking about me instead of it. And we'll end up putting you back in the kingdom that you want to be in instead of thinking about all this pain and suffering and guilt and fear. Because the fear was overcoming me this morning, friend, a little bit. To tell you the truth, I stayed up late last night. So I got up late. I was off kilter. And I didn't seek the kingdom first as much as I, I mean, I did. But not as long as I normally do because my I wasn't getting my mind right. And I had that same trouble yesterday, so I watched a couple different books of, of the Gospel, right? I watched the Gospel of John and the Gospel of Mark on video. You realize you can get that on, I think I watched it on Tubi. You can get it on Freebie. I watched one on Freebie and one on Tubi, I think. I mean, you can, but if you're going to do that, there's a specific gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that is like word for word out of the Bible. They translate, I think it's out of the New King James, but I'm not sure. I did 
look at them one time and they pretty much translated out the same. So it's important because a lot of these Jesus movies are all made up. I mean, I like that thing that they have, that TV series. I watched the first few seasons. I haven't watched it in a while. But they're lying to you about the way it went. They showed that it was um, Matthew was helping Jesus write his um, speech for the Sermon on the Mount. Do you understand what they're doing? That is an outright lie. Uh, let me clear this up for you. Jesus said, when you go before your judges, do not think about what to say, that the Holy Spirit will give you what to say at that very moment. That's the way Jesus would have done that. He would have never wrote his speeches in advance. I never write mine in advance. I never write things. I ask my father to speak for me. I open my mouth and start talking. Right? So that's the truth. The truth is, I don't care whether you believe that or not. It doesn't matter to me. The reason I was struggling this morning is because, well, somebody this morning was kind of said, you know, implied that I wasn't well. Happens often, friend. If you think this world is sane, then you should think that I am insane. Because I think Christ is sane, and anybody that believes that Christ is true, the truth and the life, knows this world's insane. Us killing each other in the name of selfishness is evil. I'm here to call the world evil, just like Jesus did. And because I call the world evil, the world's going to hate me for it. And those of the world will hate me. And those that say that they're Christian and are not, they say they are Jews and they are not, like it says in the Bible, right? They will hate me too. Because they love the world more than they love them, my Father. And they say they love Jesus, but they love nothing but their own selfishness. And friend, I'm always battling this thought of selfishness. The battlefield's in our head. It's the serpent is a snake. It's got a forked tongue. It's always telling me half-truths. It's always trying to get me to do the wrong thing or always trying to get me to be afraid. But Jesus said, I don't have to let that thought have power over me that he give me the Holy Spirit and it will put its foot on Satan's neck. And it has. But if I get away from the Holy Spirit and I get wrapped up in worldly things, then quickly the ability to do this dissipates, right? So Jesus was telling you how to do this. But those Christians that say that you can't receive the Holy Spirit, the voice of God, they're liars and they're thieves. And if you listen to them, you'll never find the kingdom Christ was promising you right here, right now. Because I don't have to be afraid and I don't have to have these thoughts that make me feel guilty because Christ died on the cross to give me the right to put him before my Father. Well, how can I put him before the Father if I can't talk to the Father? So anybody that says that you can't talk to the Father is a liar and a thief. They're trying to steal my father's kingdom because they want to glorify themselves. So if that's you, you don't want to listen to me because I'll call you a liar and a thief. And I'm not meaning it meanly, but you're, you can't say you know Jesus and then, and then go be in the world and be of the world instead of of Christ. Jesus said he who saves his life will lose it, but he who loses it for his sake will gain it. He's either a liar or a truth teller, friend. You're going to have to get past all this world stuff and these preachers that have these serpent tongues. They're all liars and thieves, and Jesus told you that the Pharisees, including the Christian Pharisees, would get thrown into prison and pay all that was due. And that the Christian Pharisees and Pharisees, the people that spoke like them, that were saying one thing, but Jesus said another, that at the end of the age, they would owe twice the debt. Go read. This is what Jesus said. Call me a liar, call Christ a liar. Right? So a lot of your preachers will say that I'm a liar, but they're liars. I'm just outright telling you. They got a forked tongue. You go read Jesus and tell me that what I'm saying isn't true. Then when you say, I'm not saying what's true, then you're saying Jesus isn't saying what's true. Therefore, you've denied him as king, and now you can rightfully be cast into the furnace, which is coming. But it was never there. It's coming here. You already see that. They told you about the one world order coming about. It's already here. The World Economic Forum is already runs our government through BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street and some other select corporations. America is a monopoly. Any of you that don't know that, shame on you, because if you've listened to any of my videos, you should know it. And if not, you're just in plain denial because you want to be. So this is not the time to seek the world. This is the time to seek the kingdom and then give to another what it's, you seek for yourself. If you want love. If you want love, give love. If you want joy, give joy. If you want peace, give peace. If you want forgiveness, give forgiveness. Because if you don't give forgiveness, you're not going to receive it. Jesus told you that. 
he said it outright. He said it in the Lord's Prayer. He said it in parables. The man couldn't have been any clearer to anything other than saying that if you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. And how many people hold on to other, the debt to, that they blame other people for, and therefore they're going to be held accountable and cast into the furnace? Are you getting this, friend? Don't believe me. Go get a red-letter edition of the Bible and read what Jesus said and read. Don't call him a liar. The Paul stuff that they're telling you about, they mistranslate, they twist it up, and mess it up. There's plenty of people out there telling you and showing you the other things Paul said that they're not showing you. They are liars and thieves, a lot of these folks. I'm just telling you the truth. And I will rip your house down if you're not going to turn. If you're not going to be a red-letter church, meaning that you, don't, that you believe in Christ and what Christ said, friend and I have no desire to have your church survive. I know you all are going to want to kill me, right? The dragon's going to come straight out of hell to knock me off my horse. I don't care. I'm going to drag that thought of Satan straight back into hell, right where it comes from, friend. It's already done. What do you think I've been doing for four years? I've been saying a publicly traded corporation is the thought of Satan made flesh. It has absolutely nothing. It's a set of laws on paper. So it is what it is not, yet it is, just like the thought of Satan. It exists because my father allows it to, just like we allow this thought to exist in flesh. But it's nothing but a set of laws on paper, and your stocks have become your bonds. You're murdering your children with them, and you're murdering your neighbor's children with them, and my father's holding us all accountable if we don't repent for what we've done. And if you didn't know that before, because you've heard me, you now know. So you better start seeking the father and asking him what he wants you to do about it. You don't have to know. He might just have you go out and feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick, and in prison. We all have to have a task. Talking to you about the truth is the task he's given me at this point. I used to do other things. Now this is what he has me doing. Plus, I, he has me do whatever he wants done. If he makes it clear, I'll do it. But if he doesn't make it clear, I don't have the faith unless he has it for me. But I have the Holy Spirit, and every time he wants me to really do something, he really makes it clear, and I really go do it. I've stood in court against the corporations. Told them they can throw me in prison, but I ain't paying them a dime. Slaves don't pay for their enslavement, friend. You all are sick and disgusting if you're going to just allow this and let them kill your children. And my father's holding you accountable. That's a fact. Take it to the bank, because Christ said so. I'm going to forgive you for murdering your kids with these things, right? Because I have to forgive to be forgiven. But... And I'm not blaming them because we let them do it, right? Now, I'm standing against them now, but I, how, what can I do? You know, most of the world thinks I'm crazy. I can't make a stand on my own. I'll go to jails, institutions, and death, friend. I've got eternal life. I know it. i got the Holy Spirit in my head. He tells me, be not afraid. Keep coming. And every time the fear shows up, he says, Jason, are you going to pay attention to that thought or are you going to pay attention to me? And I say, you, Lord. So then I go back to paying attention to him. And we talk about what Jesus said and, and how that this was all written and that even though they think they're going to go into their underground arcs and come up and steal my father's age, that that's a lie. And I'm going to put one of those arc tours in, my, in the description of this video along with the interview to Tucker Carlson and Alex Jones. And if you call me a liar and you don't look at those two videos, I'm calling you a coward. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You'll judge me and you'll use your Pollyannity to talk trash, but you won't look at anything real. You're scared, just like the atheists. So you either are going to admit the truth is true by going and researching it, because I've been giving you all kinds of proof of what's going down. There's just no way I'm wrong. My father has led me around. This is what my father gave me. This is the great gift he gave me. He allowed me to look into the darkness and be not afraid. I see what's coming. I see what they're doing. And I see that most of you all are too scared to look and you're going to let your children get murdered. That's a fact. I can't stop that. But I will not sit around and let you do it and not call you out on it. Just like Christ called out his Pharisees, I'm calling out mine. If, you, if your churches won't turn, if you won't become in the image and likeness of Christ, I'll rip every house you got down. I'm not lying to you. Christ told you I was coming. The wilderness goat. The counterfeit Christ. I'm not counterfeit because I'm 
because I'm trying to sneakily act like I'm Christ because I'm not. But Jesus said that if he comes and makes his home in me, my father makes his home in me also. So I'm in my father, my father's in me. And therefore, of myself, I am nothing. It is the father who doeth the works. Not even the words I speak are on my behalf, but on behalf of the father who sent me. Because I speak from the spirit, not from my flesh. Am I f still flesh? Absolutely. Do I still make mistakes? Absolutely. But Christ died on the cross to give me the right to be forgiven for those mistakes. And I ask regularly. Every day I seek the kingdom. Multiple times a day I seek relationship with my Father. And we look at what I've done and whether I need to ask for forgiveness and, and how to properly handle situations. Because I have people that say I'm wrong. So... It's very easy for me to start buying into other people telling me I'm wrong. But that's not the truth because I'm following Christ. And I have the Holy Spirit that dwells in me. And I'm willing to die in order to live. And therefore, I don't care what you say. There's, there's only one way that I can't do what is my Father asks of me. And that is if He won't make it clear to me. Because He makes it clear to me every time He wants something. I mean, I walked to Washington in protest. I went to court in Virginia. Friend, I'll tear Satan down, and I'll do it alone. I don't care until, until you kill me. What, you don't think someone's going to want to end me? Do you think I don't know that somebody's going to want to end me, friend? Do you think that I don't know that the, as my videos pick up in popularity, sooner or later the dragon's going to see me? What's Dragon going to do? He's going to try to shut me up. I don't care. Understand, friend, I've been launching my arrows into the cloud that everyone could see. I'm riding a white horse and wearing my father's crown. Not because I'm worthy, because I'm not. But Christ gave me the right. I don't have to be perfect. I have to go ask him for forgiveness whenever I make mistakes. If I'm not sure if I made a mistake, I ask for forgiveness anyway. Sometimes I'll be like, Lord, did I do that wrong? He's like, Jason, ask me for forgiveness. And I say, Father, forgive me. He says, there you go. You're covered. You're forgiven. Tell Satan to take a hike. I'm like, all right, thank you, Lord. That's the way this works for me. I don't care whether you believe that or not. If you know Christ, you know that what I'm saying is true. If you don't know Christ, you think I'm a liar because you call Christ a liar. That's not my problem. That's yours. So I highly suggest you get to know Christ. Because I don't have the courage. I never did. I never will. It's only through the Holy Spirit. Jesus said the Holy Spirit's the bridge to the kingdom. But he says everything in secret. you got to seek this stuff out. You know? And when I talk about him, when I testify about him on this video, it gives me more strength, joy, and faith. Not because I'm judging you, because I can't judge you, because I'm not without sin. But I can let the Spirit speak through me and let my Father judge you through the Son, through the Holy Spirit for himself. I'm just not a liar. I don't care whether you believe that or not, friend. I have the right to do that because Christ said I did. You call me a liar, you call Christ a liar. That's just the way this works. So you can accept that I, that I am speaking the truth or not. I don't care. Go read what Jesus said. You don't have to worry about what I'm saying, right? If you know what he said, then you'll know whether I'm telling the truth or not. But what's going on in the world? I'm telling you it's going on in the world. I've been posting video after video, all this stuff. Nobody looks because they're too scared. I don't blame you. But don't tell me you're going to enter my Father's kingdom if you don't have it now. So if you're not out doing the things he asked, then your house isn't built on the rock. And when that storm hits, friend, your house is falling. I'm just telling you this. The brides are waking up right now at this very moment. I am an awakened bride. I woke up and said, Father, look at this. What have we done? He said, well, Jason, you've been sleeping. I said, well, Lord, I didn't realize what was going on. I didn't realize how bad this all was and what I was doing and how bad it was. And he's like, well, that's because you were sleeping. But I kept you asleep because you weren't ready to wake up. I am the wilderness goat. I was saved for this hour. To speak the truth so that you can make a choice. Don't think that everyone else is that you can confirm who I am through anyone else because no one else is going to believe it either. Each of you is going to make a personal choice. Here's the great news. You don't have to decide whether I'm the wilderness goat or not. All you have to do is decide to go read what Jesus said and read because he told you it was his words that judge you on the last day. So it doesn't matter who I am, whether I'm a crazy man that's making things up. 
If you believe that Jesus is the truth and the life, then you should go get to understand those parables and see that everything I've been saying, he said first. There's just no way that... Have you figured out yet that if your child denied you, would you set him on fire? Come on, friend. Is your love greater than God's? You say, I'm a blasphemer. How about you, friend? You think you love, you think you love your children more than my father loves his. You think this thought of Satan could stand against the thought of God. Y'all are out of your mind with your religion. That's just the truth. Who could stand against my father? Nobody. Not me, not you, not Satan himself. My father would see, say, Satan be gone and poofy be gone. But he exists for a reason. And he doesn't have this free will that you all act like he does. You all say that, but you don't make any sense to your religion at all. You say that God's angels have to do what he says, but the devil and his angels don't. That's a lie, friend. They're slaves to my father's will. Except my father doesn't tell them what to do. They already know what to do. Their job is to be your adversarial thought. If you choose Satan and his demons over Christ and the Father, well then... You get possessed by selfishness, which can be the spirit of fear, the spirit of selfishness, the spirit of drunkenness, the spirit of sloth, the spirit of pride. It just goes on and on, friend. You can say the spirit of this and the spirit of that. It's your obsessive thoughts. They get in there and they stay because you choose them. But if you don't want to choose them, then choose Christ and get to know him and do things he asks and start spending a lot of time in your secret place. But you have to get to know him first. I couldn't spend a lot of time in my secret place in the beginning, friend, because I couldn't control my own thoughts. The better I got to know Christ, the more I could give my thoughts to him and he would give me greater thoughts. The church says you can kill in Jesus' name. That was a lie in the beginning. It'll be a lie in the end because Jesus said offenses must come, but woe to those who bring them. Right? They base that off of lies that they're not telling you are lies because they don't even know they're lies because they don't understand what was said in the Bible. They say that Jesus said it's not time for a money belt and a sword. But anybody that looks at that knows that it was prophesied that he was listed with the transgressors. Do you think that was a mistake that somebody listed him with the transgressors? Do you think my, my father had to just like have Christ fulfill all these prophecies just because somebody said them? No, friend, there's a reason for everything. He was giving you the example of forgive them for they know not what they do. The last act of free will that man did was to heal the man that came to kill him. You get that, right? That was his last act of free will. Before they bound him, he healed the man and forgave him for he not know what he did. Then he told us, a student is not greater than his teacher. It's not to be like him. So we're supposed to be trying to be like him. But this isn't about instant perfection. You start off as a mustard tree. And if you do the things he asks and apply his sayings, you'll build your house on a rock and he'll turn you into a mustard tree. But it's not really you. It's him in you because you know him so well. You will become in the spirit of love, the spirit of Christ. That's the way this works. I'm just telling you it is. You can call me a liar. I don't care. I'm just telling you the truth so you have it. Don't expect me to figure out how to live up to this because I told my father, you know I'm a coward. You know I'm selfish. I've been evil a good bit of my life because I kept choosing alcohol and drugs and sex over God. I'm not this self-righteous dude. So my father knows that unless he does whatever it is he needs to do with me, I will fail on my own. That's a fact. So, if I fail, no, it was me, not God. And that's because God would have a purpose in it. Because I've given him both my thought of love and my thought of selfishness. He has my thought of Christ and my thought of Satan. Friend, I have no interest in letting these corporations murder your kids. And if you do, then I have no interest in you keeping the kingdom you've got. You're leaving your, hung your neighbors hungry, naked, and starving in the street while you're out worrying about bigger houses and fancier cars. The hell you are. Not to say you're Christian. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's not that it was wrong, because what's right is wrong, and what's wrong is right, and because both are true, neither are, and because I say all this, you'll understand nothing. But it's the end of the age. It's now time for a free will choice. If you will not choose 
Christ over the world, then you will not enter my Father's kingdom because that is the choice you made. Because Christ told you this. So you can go read that and you'll see that Christ said that. Don't listen to these Pharisees lie to you about once saved, always saved. They didn't know a thing from the beginning. They went and got degrees from men. They got degrees from men that taught them how to be a liar to you so that you could lie to yourself. So it's a choice. Jesus said the kingdom of God would not be said to be here or there, but the kingdom of God would said to be within you. Do you want to be in relationship with my father right now? It might cost you a lot. It might cost you a little. He said that he would give a bag of treasure according to your ability, right? I don't know what your ability is. You know what my ability is? It's zero. My father has to do it all for me because I'm a, I'm a spineless jellyfish, a coward. I've told you that. It's not me speaking on these videos. It's my father that does it for me. And I just stay very close to him and let him do what he will. And every time he, I get scared, I just run to dad and be like, Daddy, Daddy, look, here comes this thought of Satan. He's trying to scare me again. He's like, don't worry about that, Jay. You got eternal life. You promised me your death so that you could receive your life. Now you got it. Just keep walking with me and we'll just have a good old time even though your thought of Satan. See, because my thought of Satan can't scare me about what's happening right now. It can only scare me about what's going to happen, right? Jesus said, be like the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. So I just trust my Father's going to feed me and he's going to clothe me. And if he doesn't, there's a purpose in it. That's it. I know my Father. I've seen him in the beginning. I was with him in the beginning. You don't have to believe that because I wasn't originally... But maybe I was, because I don't understand how that works. All I know is I was here, I was there, and then I was here again. It was the most terrifying experience I ever had and the greatest gift he ever gave me. And when I came back, this is how I know that it wasn't just some crazy th experience. When I came back, I screamed. After screaming, I screamed, Why hath thou forsaken me? Those are the words of Christ on the cross, friend. That is not something I would have screamed. I was not down this path of knowing Jesus the way I am now at all. Those words would have never come out of my mouth. That was my father doing it for me. And he told me later he did that so that I would know that it was him doing it and that it, the experience was real because everybody thinks I'm crazy and nobody really believes that I've been with my father in the beginning. Nor do I really care whether you do or not. What matters is that in the beginning there was only God and if you don't want to be alone forever, why do you think he would want to be? So he had to create a son through him because in the beginning there was only God. If creation is created, where did he put it all? Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Not a lie. He said, the Father's greater than I. Not a lie, right? Because the Father created the Son within himself. So they are one. But he, it says that the world was made through Christ which means we were too. So therefore, us and the Father are one because we are in Christ, whether you want to admit it or not. Now, it, that was the secret, right? Only those that believed in Jesus believe that. But I'm here to just straight out tell you, friend, that everyone's in Christ and Christ is in them, and everyone's in the Father and the Father's in them, and anyone that will not accept Christ as King cannot stay in this kingdom. But my Father is so great, you can't put him in a box. He's coming out of the box that you all thought you had him nailed in. It's time, friend, to make a new choice. If you don't want to make a new choice, you're not going to have one, but you're not entering that kingdom that he promised you because you won't do what he asked. And that's what I was going to teach you out of the Bible today is in several places where Jesus said that he was going to deny you or, Lord, Lord, you know, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? He said, I'm your teacher. Why would you not do what I'm teaching you? Like, I forget the exact wording. That one's in John 14 at the beginning. Then he also said, and I'm going to say this and get off. He also said in that same spot in John chapter 14, he said that he was the vine, the father's the gardener, and we're the branches. If we're fruitful, the father will prune us and make us even more fruitful. But if we're not fruitful, at the end of the age, the dead limbs which are unfruitful limbs, get gathered up and cast into the furnace. He told you that over and over. It, the dead seed that died got ate, choked in the brambles, all that. The guy that buried his treasure got thrown out of the kingdom. This isn't a lie. Jesus told you the truth. All right, well, just know that I love you because my Father loves you. And 
May God bless you and yours.